Shalom, Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Mahaba Kakodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahushai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, but his only true name is Yahushai. Bahashim, meaning coming in the name, Ba means coming in, Ha means the, Sham means name, Raka means spirit, Kodash means the holy. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole full elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers that scatter abroad, put your forth this word in truth and sincerity. Double honors to Yahweh Bashim Shai, and double honors to the elders and the apostles and bishops of Great Millstone who will well and teach well because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the Spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai. And shalom to you, sincere sisters that listen in silence as the scriptures command you to do so. I am the brother Mashiach Razaka, and we're going to go into Revelations chapter 13 breakdown. Through the Spirit and uh, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. This is uh, Revelations 13 and 1. It says, uh, And I stood upon the sea, I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Now we know what the seven heads and ten horns are. And it says, Upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy, which pretty much represents uh, Esau's power structure, okay? That's what that's pretty much representing, okay? Which we know the uh, ten, the seven heads is talking about the seven uh, rulerships of the Edomites, which you can go to Revelation 17. Actually, we'll just get that real quick. Revelation 17 and um, I think it's Revelation 17. It might be 18, but I think it's 17. Uh, yep, Salakia. This is Revelation 17 and 3. It says, So he carried away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet covered beast. And a scarlet covered beast, that's talking about the NATO, the EU, okay, the EEC, known as the European Economic Community, which is the EU, now known as the EU, which is the European Union, okay. That's that scarlet covered beast, which is the NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization which is the modern-day Roman Empire today. Okay, that's that woman that sits upon the scarlet-covered beast. And it says, full of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Now, the seven heads is referring to the seven um, rulerships of the Edomites, which is uh, the Greeks, the British, uh, Germania Minor, the Spanish, the French, um, the Romans, and Germania Major. Then you have the ten horns which the ten horns represents um the ten european nations which is france west germany uh italy belgium um netherland uh i think it's uh was it luxembourg denmark um denmark greece ireland and england those are the uh ten horns okay so that's talking about pretty much Esau's um, infrastructure. Okay, that's pretty much what that's going into. That's pretty much uh, representing Esau's power structure. So now we'll go back to Revelations 13 and read that again. Okay, it's Revelations 13 and 1. It says, And I stood upon the sea, I stood upon the sand, Salakia, of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. You see? And it says, upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. So again, this represents Esau's power structure. Okay, verse 2. And it says, uh, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. And this is talking about the Greek empire. Okay, that's what this is talking about right here. That's talking about the Greek empire. And it says, and his feet were like the feet of a bear. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority, which the start of it was the was Greece. All right, that was the start of his kingdom. All right, which the bear represents Russia, and the mouth of the lion is uh, Great Britain. Okay, and that dragon is EU, the NATO. Okay, that's Esau's power structure there. Okay, and we're gonna go. Um, Verse 3, okay, I'm going to take my time on this, so like it. It says, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, 
and all the world wandered after the beast. All right. That daily wound was Rome. All right. Being taken down according to Revelations, uh, the 20th chapter. So, you know, so he couldn't, you know, deceive the world anymore. All right. His daily wound was healed, which is the European Union, you know, which was uh, that treaty. All right. The Treaty of Rome, which brought them back together. That wound was was healed going back to 1957. You know, the Treaty of Rome. OK. And that's what that uh, goes back to, you know, going back to 1957, the Treaty of Rome. So that's that wounded there. It talks about that daily wound was healed going back to that uh, that treaty. Okay, 1957. Verse 4, and it says, And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? Okay, so who was able to make war with the EU and the NATO? You know, and all of these countries, the Edomite rulerships were. Okay, they were the ones that was able to make war you know, with, with the with the EU and NATO and all these other countries, the Edomite rulerships, okay? They were the ones that what did that, were able to do that, okay? Verse 5, it says, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great words and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Forty and two months. Verse 6, and it says, And he opened his mouth and blasphemy unto the Most High to blaspheme his name, and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And that's, you know, this devil. All right. That's who that is. And that's this devil, you know, and how, you know, he was, you know, how was he able to do that? You know, by sitting upon these laws, you know, that are contrary to the scriptures. He came up with his own laws. He has his own laws, you know, he established his own laws. You know, and that's that's this devil right here, you know. He's able to do that by setting up all these laws, you know, that are contrary to these scriptures. Okay. That's how, you know, this devil is able to do that. Verse 7. And it says, the saints, it's like it, it says, it's like it. It says, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints. And that's what I was reading there. Um, it says, read again, it says, and it was given unto him to make war war with the saints and the saints are the israelites okay it says unto overcome him and power was given over all kindreds and tongues and nations so the saints there are the israelites so you know that's how you know he it was able to overcome us all right he um overcame us you know the lord gave him the power to do that to overcome us you know that's how he overcome that's how he came overcame us Read that again. It says, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints, which are the Israelites, and overtook and overcome them. Right. We were overtaken by them. The Lord gave us, the Lord gave us onto them, you know, gave them power to do that. Okay. It says, overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Verse eight. And it says, uh, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names were not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Verse 9, and it says, And if any man have an ear, let him hear. If any man have an ear, let him hear. And it says, verse 10, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So everything that happened to us is going to happen unto them double. Okay, everything that has happened to us is going to happen unto them double. And I got a precept to prove that, Revelation 18, and we're going to go to verse, let's start at verse 5. It says, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High have remembered her iniquities. So the Lord hasn't forgotten Esau's, uh, you know, these Edomites, Esau's uh, wickedness. You know, Esau believed he could sweep it under the rug and everything is good, but the Lord ain't forgotten that, right? So this is the reward that's coming, right? The scriptures clearly said in verse 10, He that leads captivity shall go into captivity. You know, so everything that happened to us is going to happen on to them double. This is to prove it. This is Revelations 18 and 6. It says, reward her even as she rewarded you and double onto her according to her works in the cup which she had fulfilled, fulfilled to her double. So all the pain, all the sorrow, all the destruction is going to happen back 
onto her double. Okay, it's due. Revelation 13, and uh, we're going to go to verse... So that's what that's talking about there. Verse 11, it says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, right? And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spanked as a dragon, which is Esau's power structure. Those two horns represents his demise, all right? Which you have the Democrats and you have the Republicans, okay? So those are what those two horns is referring to there. The, the two horns is referring to his demise, Okay, which you have the Democrats and the Republicans. Okay, so that's what that's going into right there. Verse 12, and it says, He exercises all the power of the fist. That's like a, it says, and he exercises, exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the, causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Right? Because... What did Rome have? Rome had the patriarchs and the publicans, all right, which the Roman system, which this is the Roman system all over again, all right, so that's talking about that Roman society, all right, that Roman society that America follows today, because this is the modern day Roman Empire, all right, this is the, the iron and clay there, the iron and clay is the revival of the Roman uh, Empire, which is the divided kingdoms, okay, this is modern day Rome today, okay, and America follows the same system as ancient rome modern day rome which is america today it follows that same system as ancient rome okay this is uh revelations 13 13 it says he had great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and that's talking about his technology okay his blessing of the sword you know dropping bombs on different countries so that's that fire that comes down from heaven okay because Esau, his blessing was the sword. And we can get that out too. This is Genesis uh, 47. Mm, is it 47? I think it's... Let me see. So I, can, I think it's... Uh, I said 47. I think it's uh, 27. So like it. And um, start at verse 38. And actually, we could. I could have got our revelations. But uh, we just want to prove that that's his... Uh, that's his blessing, you know, that sword. This is Genesis 27 and 38. And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Esau is a so-called white man. That's who Esau is. Esau is the biblical Edomites today. You so-called white people are the Edomites. You come from the, the line of Esau. You guys are the Edomites today. Right? Verse 39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. And they got the fatness of the earth today. He's ruling, right? He's in power. Right? He got the fatness of the earth. It says, And of the dew of heaven from above. Verse 40. It says, And by thy sword shall I live. So his blessing is the sword. His blessing is that sword. And that goes to that Revelation 13 and 13. That's talking about his technology. All right? His blessing of that sword. You know, he has... Esau has much weaponry, many weaponry, technology, right? And it says, And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also. This is verse 38. Of my father, and Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Verse 39. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling place should be the fatness of the earth, which Esau has the fatness of the earth right now. When you go to Job 9 and 24, it says what? The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So Esau is ruling. He has taken peace from the earth, which I'll get that out too, Lord willing, next. The Lord keeps that on my spirit. It says that the fatness of the earth, where was that? Uh, verse 39, the fatness of the earth and of the, and of the dew of heaven from above. Verse 40, and by thy sword shall I live and thou shalt serve thy brother and it shall come to pass when thou shall have dominion, have the dominion, thou shall break his yoke from off thy neck, right? Because Esau is not in servitude right now. He's on the loose, all right? The Lord is using Esau to fulfill prophecy. Esau is at the top, all right? He's he's not serving us at the moment, but it's going to come to a time where he's going to go into slavery because that's prophecy. He's going to serve his brother. But right now, Esau is not in chains. He's not serving us. He's on the loose right now. He's our slave, but he's on the loose, He's, he's given to the promise of the elect. These 17 heathen nations are going into slavery. 
But I want to get out that Revelations uh, 7 and then we go back to that. I mean, Revelation uh, 12. I think it's. Is it 12 and 12? I think it's. Let me see. Salaki. 6 and 4. Salaki. Revelation 6 and 4. It says that there went out another horse that was red. That's talking about Esau Edom, the so called white man. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. How did Esau take peace from the earth? With his sword, which is his blessing. His, you know, his sword, his blessing. Right? It says, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So that blessing is his sword. Okay? That's that blessing. So when you go to Revelations 13 and 13, which you're reading right here. And it says, he doeth great wonders, so that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And that's talking about Esau's technology. That's talking about his technology, his blessing of the sword. You know, dropping bombs, you know, on different countries. You know, so that fire that comes down from heaven, that's what that's talking about. Esau's blessing, he uses the sword. Okay, that's his blessing. Verse 14. So like it. This is verse 14. And it says, And deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he have had power to do in the sight of the beasts, saying to them that dwell, right, on the face on the face of the earth. It says that they should make an image of the beast which had the womb by a sword and did live. So what's that image? The way the uh, that's his way of life, Esau's way. Okay, this is the American way, you know, that they, you know, try to portray. All right, they have all these nations drunk and off of what that wine, right? And this is going into that image, which is his system. Because verse 15 is going to talk about that image, it's going to tell you what it is. Okay. This is Revelation 13, 15. And he had power to give life onto the image of the beast. The image is his system. That's the image there. And that beast there is referring to the NATO. Okay. It says that he had power to give life onto the image of the beast. And that image, that's talking about his system. Okay. His system. That's what that's talking about. His system. It says... It says, uh, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should supposed be both speak, and cause as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So if you don't, you know, conform to this American way, you're going to be killed. Because it's going to go into that time where they're going to bring in a new system. Okay? Because right now we're living off of fiat currency, which you have the fiat currency is cash, a, a dollar bill, the two dollar bill, the five dollar bill, the, the the twenty dollar bill, you know, the 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 fifty dollar bill, the hundreds, okay. You got you got you got cash. You got pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters. You have all these things, but they're gonna get rid of that and they're gonna come in with a whole new system, which is the CBDC, the Central Bank Digital Currency, which is gonna be the C hit. So that's what's gonna be the new currency, okay. And if you take that MOTB, which is that C hit, you will be destroyed. There's no repentance for taking it. Okay, there's no repentance for taking it. Verse 15, it says, this is what verse verse 16 says. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a M-A-R-K, or it says to receive, so like it, to re, it says, I'll read from the top again. I was reading verse, I was skipped down to 17. 16, it says, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a M-A-R-K, in their right hand or in their foreheads. So this is talking about the C hip here. Now, when you go into the meaning of that word mark, it goes into uh, G5480, which is karagma, which is a stamp or imprinted mark. Okay, it's something physical here. Now, you have other Israelite groups here. I recently been watching them, seeing what they've been doing. You know, I've seen it through the elders and the apostles. And you got guys saying that the image is talking about Cesare Borgia. And that's not talking about that. Okay, when you go from verse 15 all the way down, that is talking about Esau's system. That's talking about Esau and his system. That's what it's talking about. It's not talking about no Cesare Borgia. Verse 15 is not talking about that. Okay, so when you go into the meaning of that word mark there, it goes into G5480, which is Karagma, a stamp or imprinted mark. Okay, when you go into the entomology 
of G5480 Karagma is G5482, which is Karax, a pale stake or palisade. That palisade there is referring to the needle that they use to insert that C-hip inside you. You take it, you're going to be destroyed. There's no repentance for taking it. You go into the entomology of G1125 that goes into Grafo, right? G1125, which is Grafo, which is to, I'll read right here, and letter A, to delineate or form letters on a tablet, parch paper, parchment, paper, or other material. So this is something physical here. This isn't uh, something spiritual. This isn't talking about Cedric Borgier. This ain't talking about that. This is talking about Esau's system, beast system. Okay, the C hip, his beast system. That's what he's coming with. Okay, and that's going into those that's going to be, you know, because um, they're going to make it mandatory. Now, they're not going to force you to get it, but they're going to make it mandatory that to make it in this society, you must have this. They're not going to force you, though, but it's going to be made mandatory. You won't be able to survive without having this. So, you know, this is, you know, talking about the MOTB which is the RFID chip implant. And if you take this, you will be destroyed. Verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. You see that? Verse, eight, uh, verse 18, and it says, here is his wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man in his Number is 603 score 6. Okay, 603 score 6 goes into high size stigma. You go into the entomology of high size stigma, it goes into stigma, which is a physical branding, a physical branding uh, of your master, which we're going to get right here. You go into the interliner of it, and you go to 603 score 6, it goes into G5516, right? So, like you, G5516. Which goes into Strong's G fifty five sixteen Chai Xai Stigma Chai Xai Stigma. You go into the entomology of high size stigma, it goes into stigma G forty seven forty two, right? Strong's G forty seven forty two Stigma Stigma. You see that it says a mark pricked in or branded upon the the it says branded upon the body. You see that branded upon the body to ancient oriental usage. Slave and soldiers bore the name or the stamp of their master or commander branded or pricked cut into their bodies to indicate that master or general they belong to. So that C hip there, that, that C hip there which is the mark of the beast, you take that, you're going to be destroyed. The, 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 the mark of the beast is the sea hit, if you know what I'm saying. I can't say, you know, I still say it, but the, the mark of the beast is the sea hit. And if you take it, you will be destroyed, okay? You will be destroyed if you take that sea hit, man. There's no repentance for taking that. It says cut into their bodies to indicate what master or general they belong to and that there were even some devotes who stamped themselves in this way with the token of their gods. So this is a physical thing. This is a physical thing here. Okay, and for those of you that don't know what the MLTB is, I'm going to show you right now. This is the C-Hip here. And if you take it, you will be destroyed. There's no repentance for taking this here. Okay. This right here is against the Lord, okay? And you got people that don't believe in this. Regardless if you believe in this or not, you take this here, you will be destroyed. There's no repentance for taking this, okay? So, hey, I just want to, uh, let me read it too. It says, do not take the, see, do not take the implant, okay? Don't take this because this is the mark of the beast, and regardless if you believe it or not, you take this chip here, you will be destroyed. There's no repentance for taking it. So, a hey, Lord willing, this lesson is that a fine. I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Mahavah Kakodash. You know, giving all honors and glories and praise to Yahweh Bahashim um, Double honors to Yahweh Bahashim Double honors to the elders and the apostles and bishops 
of Great Millstone who will well and teach well. And peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers. And shalom to you, sincere sisters that's listening in silence as the scriptures command you to do so. I am the brother Mashiach Razakah. And Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. And on to the next one. Shalom.